Hi there, I'm Sarah Mee and I'm going to be sewing the camisole from the Love Notions Luna Loungewear set and I'll be finishing it with some fold over elastic. I'll be using my serger and my cover stitch and I'm going to be using the guides. So you're going to need all three pattern pieces if you're going to use the fold over elastic, even if you're going to use fabric. All right, well, let's get to it. For the fabric for the Luna Loungewear set, there's a lot of recommended fabrics, and so you should look at the list and determine what's going to work for you. All right, this is my first time making the Luna Loungewear cami, and to me it looks like it's a fairly loose-fitting camisole. There's an optional shelf bra as well. I'm just making really simple camisoles to wear under my clothes or maybe under uh, my sweaters uh, in the wintertime. So first thing you want to make sure of is that your knit isn't torquing. So you want to line up the selvages here and make sure that you're not seeing any diagonal lines at the fold when you hold your fabric up. Just kind of give it a good look and you know shift these selvages a little bit left or right so that you make sure that your selvages are definitely parallel. You don't want this to torque, especially because this pattern in particular has the same pattern piece for the front and the back. So ideally you can fold it, these two layers in half like this and cut the whole thing one time. So do I think this is the most accurate way to cut out a pattern piece? It's not, but honestly with knits they're pretty forgiving. So why not make it speedy? All right, so uh, sometimes for some sizes, you might want to open out the fabric and then cut one at a time. Do what is best for your fabric, the width of your fabric and the size that you're sewing. All right, so we're gonna place this on the fold and make sure that all of your layers are included. I used existing camisoles that I already own to kind of compare the sizing of this. And then there's notes in the instructions that say that there's two inches of negative ease in the bust and positive ease in the waist. So what that means is that it's going to be a little more snug in your bust and a little loose in your waist. I'm going to be cutting out the medium today because I don't want mine to be too loose. I would like it to be a little form fitting so that it's not baggy under my clothes. I'm not thinking about this as something I'm gonna sleep in, which it is a loungewear set. So if you wanna make like a nightgown or something to sleep in, looser is probably more comfortable. Just trying to get so the paper doesn't wrinkle too much. I'm cutting through four layers of the knit right now. Make sure you get your pattern piece lined up on the fold really well. It's really easy to get it a little bit larger if you have your pattern piece not quite on the fold or a little bit smaller. All right, I don't think we have any notches to mark for the style that we're gonna be cutting. Note that it has 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And we'll set these aside. I'm gonna make one more. And this one I'm gonna kinda of offset the fabric because it is wider than the other one. And uh, I wanna save a little bit on the side there just so it's not waste. So. Okay, if you're going to be using the fabric for the straps, you need to cut this on most likely the cross grain of the fabric so that the stretchiest part of the fabric is going across the pattern piece. So it's really good to check the stretch 
of your pattern pieces and there's some guides in the pattern and making sure that even if the grain is marked differently on the pattern piece you really need the stretch to go along it just like this so determine what that is and which way you want it to go some are two-way and some are four-way all right, now let's cut the elastic that we need for the armholes and the binding of the camisole. So we're gonna still use the exact same pattern pieces that came with it for fabric, but I'm gonna be using this fold over elastic. And a lot of times you see this written as FOE. Took me a while to realize that's fold over elastic. <laughs> All right, so this piece right here is on the fold and so is this one. So make sure that you get the right length. You're gonna need two for the arms. Make sure they're identical. And then you're gonna need, also need two for the neck. Let's cut the arms for this one here. And then we're gonna do the bodice binding. All right, so one of the important things to mark on these pieces is for the arms, you really need to mark this star that's on the pattern piece right here. So make sure you do that. I'm gonna put my pattern piece on the fold. All right, put my pattern piece on the fold here, and then I'm going to mark the star on both sides. I'm gonna do it on the wrong side and I'm using a washable marker. All right, we're ready to sew. Let's do it. All right, we're gonna start sewing our camisoles and I'm just gonna sew two pretty much exactly the same just so we can kind of go through the steps twice. And at the very end, I'm gonna show you how to do it with fabric instead of a fold over elastic. I did a trial here and I barely had a yard of fabric. And so I just decided just to just go straight down to the full length of the fabric just so I had a longer version of it. It's obviously a little too tight for me down through here, but that's okay, I can always shorten it and it was an experiment. Um, but I really like everything else. I've, this is the medium, and so because I wanted it to fit kind of snug, and so it does fit me really perfectly up through the top, and it's just too tight down here probably. It does fit me better off of the dress form, um, but would I wear something this long in real life? No, and, and if I wore it to bed, it would just ride up, right? So I can just shorten it, and it'll be a cute little strawberry camisole. All right, so let's get going, um, and we'll get our camisoles sewn. All right, so um, I'm going to be sewing these camisoles strictly on my serger and my cover stitch, but I do think that there's a couple of spots that might be helpful to use your straight stitch machine, even if you use it on the zigzag function. You don't have to, but um, I'm gonna show you that because I think that it makes the overall process of cover stitching your fold over elastic to the edge a lot easier. And the two tools that I'm going to be using are my awl, because then I don't have to use pins or get anything really close to the needle or the blade. And then I'm also gonna be using these clips, or you can use these clips if you want instead of pins. And I highly recommend that because using pins can be a little bit tricky around your machines if they have a blade. So if you're just using your home machine and you're using a zigzag stitch, it, you can use all the pins that you like. And you can use pins in your serger and your cover stitch. I just don't recommend it because it's just a really expensive piece to buy if you end up cutting a pin with your blade and you might as well just not have the pins near it. That's kind of in my experience. So, all right, so let's get to it. Now, for the most part, we're going to be solely on the serger and the cover stitch, and there's not going to be a face cam. It's just going to be the overhead of my machines. But since we're already sitting here, uh, I'm going to sew this one step with my single needle machine right now because we're right here in front of it. And that is to take the longer piece of elastic. You have two short ones for the top edge of your camisole, and then you have these two longer ones. And remember, you need these two marks from the cut edge, this, the star on your pattern piece. So we're gonna take this and we're going to sew it right sides together at the 3 8 inch seam. Now I tried this a few different ways. 
And I found that this way is the best. So we're going to clip these little threads. You want to get rid of all these little threads. So you, you could probably zigzag this if you want or serge it, but the serging I felt was way too bulky. And so now I'm going to open this up. It's a little unconventional. You would never do this in production in a factory. And then I'm going to stitch on either side of the seam just to really flatten it out. It's all going to be secured. You don't really have to um, backstitch. The only reason I am is so that I don't have these loose threads that I have to deal with later on. Because remember, we are going to cover stitch this to the camisole. We're just making this nice and flat and also for what I'm about to do next. So after I have top stitched this down on either side of the side seam, I'm going to trim all this excess off and just get rid of it. And then this way, you know for sure that you've really made this spot um, secure by top stitching it down. Remember, you have to be able to fold this in half wrong sides together and that's why we're trying to reduce the bulk because this spot also goes to the underarm of the camisole and it's already a little bulky there because you have the side seam and if you've overlocked it you've side seamed it with two pieces of fabric together and you can't really open it out to reduce the bulk right it has to push one way or the other so this way you can kind of reduce that now another method you could do is to sew, still sew it right sides together and then press the seam allowance one direction when you top stitch it. That way, when you line it up to the underarm, you have the bulk of the underarm seam, the side seam going one direction, and then you could have the bulk of this seam going the other way to kind of offset it. So that's another option as well. All right, so I'm gonna try that way on this underarm. So we can look at the difference when we get to that stage. I'm just going to even up the seam allowance a tiny bit and now I'm going to open it and I'm going to press it to one direction and I'm just stitching it like a small eighth inch away from the seam. There's the seam and there's my stitching right there. All right, and get rid of all these threads now. Just do it now because it's a lot easier than later when you're trying to navigate what is your, your straight stitch machine thread um, and what is the serger thread. You don't want to cut the wrong one. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sew our side seams. So you're gonna put your camisole right sides together. We're gonna sew three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So we're gonna, I'm gonna trim a tiny bit off because of the width of my stitch. Just gonna sew straight down. I like to get it going and then I use the machine kind of like a helping hand and then I line up the rest of it and then I'm ready to go. Okay, and so I'm also going to be aware of stitching with the same front or back piece facing up so that I'm gonna turn this over. And then that way, my stitching is going to look the same on this side seam on the same side. And then that way, it's a little easier for me to tell that, um, you know, if I've designated a front or a back to the camisole or whatever I'm sewing with knits, the serger has a distinctive stitch to it that, um, or it has a distinctive look and I feel like one side looks better than the other. Even if it doesn't look better or worse in your opinion, if you just pick one and you say, all right, I'm gonna make sure I sew you know, right side up on the same piece of fabric, you can keep your seams straight when you're going to flip them to press towards the front or press towards the back. Or in this case, since the front and the back are the exact same piece, 
you can designate that they both press towards the same piece. So, you know, this way I'll know which way to press it just by looking at the stitch rather than kind of going, oh, which way did I press this at the armhole at the top? And, and you have to kind of search for it. So it's not mandatory, but now I know, you know, when I go to, you know, sew my elastic at this little armhole, all I gotta do is go, oh, that's the, this is the side of the stitching I like, and so I always have it faced up, so I'm gonna press it towards this way. And I don't have to go, oh, which way did I press the hem? You know, especially when I'm sewing the hem, I've already sewn the armhole. I don't have to look at the top to see which way I pressed it. I just know, oh, this stitch, you know, is the way I always have it up. The other thing to note is that a lot of times your serger stitch naturally wants to press a certain direction. And I have found that sometimes it's the side that doesn't look as nice is facing up. Like in my case right here, this is usually what I consider the wrong side of the serging, but it naturally wants to be the side that faces up. So. It's just kind of a weird quirk. So you can go with it or go against it. It doesn't matter. It's just personal preference. Both sides look good in their own way. All right, so we're going to now smooth out our transitions along this armhole edge. So you see this little underarm because I have this little jog here. I'm going to smooth out this transition because we're about to attach the armhole elastic and the front and back elastic. So let's just get our transitions kind of in order. Ooh, I'm doing kind of a bad job here. There we go. And then we'll be ready to go when we get here. All right, and so I think that if you want, and you're pretty, you know, adept at putting fold over elastic on the neckline, you're probably not watching this video, but you also may not need a helping hand to kind of get it going. And so what I find is that if you want, you can tack this on the end here, just at the end, at the beginning and the end of the seam. And it really makes fiddling with it in your cover stitch a lot easier. As long as you keep this little tack or this little stitch inside the 3 8 inch seam allowance, it won't show because you're gonna cover that up with elastic. So we're gonna do that. And then that way it'll be a lot easier. You don't have to, you can do a binder clip if you want or something similar. Uh, just make sure that you put that binder clip kind of, start, do it about an inch and a half away from the edge because you're gonna need to get it under the machine and you'll still want it on there. All right, so this is one of the little tricks that um, you might want to employ, especially if you're getting kind of the hang of sewing things that are a little stretchy and you don't want them to snap into your machine. Um, and lose the end of. So you can just kind of tack it right here at the end. So I'm gonna fold it over. It's still fussy no matter what, but at least this makes the cover stitch part less fussy. All right, so I have a, a different color thread in here, which is great, so you'll be able to see it. And remember, this is gonna get caught in the other elastic of the armhole, so no one's gonna see it. So let's just line that up like this, fold it over, stay inside that seam allowance. You don't have to back tack, but if you want, you can. I'm only going to do it because I only got a couple stitches there. All right, so now we have that tacked right there at the end. Get rid of any of these threads too. You don't want them poking out and giving away your little, your little secret. All right, so make sure you don't twist the elastic. Go to the other side. And same thing. Make sure it's all relaxed under the needle so it's not pulling out. Just like that and then we'll do the other one while we're here. All right you can see my elastic kind of wings off the edge there and that's okay because remember this cut edge is getting nestled into the fold there. And this is, you know, this little elastic piece essentially is a rectangle and this is a point. So you definitely, if you have those little wings, that's okay. We're gonna even them up when we're done sewing 
this whole thing right here. All right, let's go back to our cover stitch and sew our elastic on. All right, so we're back um, tacking our front elastic to the neck between the points there on either end. And so now we're ready to cover stitch. And one thing I find is that in general, if I keep this elastic kind of flat and open the wrong side facing up, it's a little easier to maneuver. And then I just fold it over at the last second. All right, so let's get it going and I'll show you what I mean. So this is when I like to use my awl to kind of slide it in there and put the presser foot down. Now, if you get a little bit of a rough start, don't worry, that little first bit is gonna be enclosed in the armhole elastic. All right, so you see, I have this elastic flat, wrong side facing up, and then I just lay this camisole right up to that fold line. And then we can just, you know, roll over that fold as we get up to it. And so you're gonna gently stretch this and it's key that you stretch your fabric and then start sewing. In other words, I don't want to start sewing and then stretch because you can inadvertently bend your needle. And so what I like to do is I hold this end here. And like I said, you know, I've got it kind of flat there. I'm going to stretch it, put that cut edge into that fold and then just pinch it down kind of every time it's like halfway point. And so hold it while it's stretched and then sew and keep it stretched while you sew. Don't stretch your camisole, just stretch the elastic. When you get to the end here, if you didn't tack it, you might find that, you know, um, you're holding it and you can't, you're running out of room. You can kind of grab your all, stab it through all layers and just kind of hold it until you get right up there. All right. All right, and so I'm going to smooth this transition out to the point and get rid of any of these little threads right now. And let's look at this one over here. Same thing. Let's get rid of these threads. These are the kind of threads that will poke out from your armhole elastic, so you should just get rid of them now. All right, let's do our back neck or the other neck edge there. Same thing, put it in there. And I always do a few stitches and then that way I can now adjust. And I always stop needle down when I'm going to do any adjustments. And same thing, we're going to stretch this, figure out where that halfway is. Keep it stretched, not the camisole, only the elastic. Keep that cut edge in the fold. It just wants to do that because we're straightening it out. And then just keep adjusting. This is a lot easier than you think, especially if you pre-tacked this edge down here because I can just keep letting it go and it naturally is still going to stay evenly distributed because I don't lose this little piece of elastic towards the body of the camisole. All right, it's looking good. All right, and so like I said, we're gonna keep smoothing our transitions, making sure, since we're gonna do that next, get rid of any of your little threads. All right, so now we're gonna do our armhole elastic. We've sewn it into the circle. We have our stars marked at the right spot so that we know how to line it up to the points. Make sure there's no threads on this guy either. So now, in general, as sewists, we really like to start and stop at places like the underarm. And you can do that with this. 
I do feel like it's a little harder to get your stretch evenly distributed on the elastic because the elastic needs to stretch to fit. Um, and so if you've designated a front or a back of your camisole, I think you should start on the back strap if you can. But most likely if you do start on the strap above the point, you're going to be starting on the front on one and the back on the other because we're going to be starting from this point to go to the other point. And so I'm going to line up my top edge here to the mark. And one key thing is you have to have the circle of elastic in front of the garment. Don't put it behind the garment and put it on just like I was just now. It's, it seems logical that it would go back here, but it, you cannot get all the way around the entire circle without stopping and adjusting. You'd have to cut your threads and um, get situated back on there. You cannot make the full circle unless this circle is in front of the garment. It's a brain teaser. Trust me, I've, I've solved the brain teaser plenty of times because I failed at it plenty of times to remember this now. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start just like an inch or two above, and you don't even have to be holding this. We can just go like this. Just put your elastic in here. Make sure that here's your star, here's your underarm, here's your star. Those are the markings on the pattern piece. And we're gonna just start sewing right above it. I can see my star because I used this washable ink so you could see it. It's pretty obvious. You could use chalk or whatever. All right, so I've got my elastic in there. Remember, pick up the elastic, put your garment underneath. We're gonna sew just a tiny bit and then put it up to that star, fold it over. And this is another good place to use your awl because this is kind of thick. You want your elastic to meet with the elastic, be right up above the elastic that's folded above. Just like that. And we're gonna get it onto the fabric, stop with the needles down, now we're gonna start adjusting. So this underarm seam is going to go to the side seam here. This is the one that I'm experimenting with pressing it one direction, both layers. So then this seam needs to be pressed the opposite way so that we can nestle these two thicknesses together. So this elastic seam allowance is pressing this way. The camisole seam allowance is pressing that way. I think personally, I like it when the seam is open. I think it's a little easier to deal with but I just wanted to show this as an example. All right, and so now we're holding this right here and we're going to now stretch the elastic only and fold it over. And so keep your elastic, hold your elastic right now, keep it stretched so that you can kind of keep these thicknesses lined up, that underarm seam. And let's get our needles in there and now we're gonna adjust for the rest. So same thing, you have this other mark right there that the top of your point goes to. And I, I can just leave it open like this even, just like this. Stretch the elastic, not the camisole. It's very easy to do both. Give it a little tug if your machine has trouble going over that thickness. I like to adjust by just lifting up my presser foot sometimes. And like I say, I like to keep this elastic kind of flat and open and I just adjust these separately. I find it a lot easier than using pins and things because you have full control over it and you're not trying to manage the pin or the binder clip. You're only trying to manage the elastic and the camisole. Now don't stretch your strap, just sew it. This part's really easy. It seems like it's gonna be hard, but it's pretty easy. Now I'm getting to the beginning, so I'm gonna trim all my threads. Overlap a little bit. And if you're using a matching thread, it shouldn't be any problem to have your start stop on the strap here. 
All right, trim your threads. And let's check it out here. All right, so we have our first armhole. I got a little hung up right there. You can see a little extra thread there. And see, there's the seam allowance of my elastic being pressed that way. So I probably could have done a better job using my awl to pull this elastic over to hide it as I was getting there. All right, so let's do our other armhole. Remember, put your elastic on top of the garment. I'm going to start sewing it for a little bit. And here's my underarm. This one, see this is much flatter with the seam pressed open and stitched down. All right, so we'll get this going. Kind of slide it in there. Put my presser foot down. And now we have our garment. Make sure you're doing it right side up. Slide it to the mark. And see here again, I'm gonna use this all to kind of pull over that elastic. I'm not pulling it so much to pull the under layer around. I'm just trying to pull this top layer to be directly above the bottom layer. Okay, now we're on the fabric. We've got our needles down. And now we're going to stretch to this side seam. Just here. I'll lay that underarm seam or the side seam right here to line up with that seam. And we'll just hold it just like this. Stretch the elastic and off the camisole. All right, and then right when I get here, if I let go, it snaps the elastic back towards the machine. So still stretch your elastic to that underarm seam, that side seam. I'm gonna pull my all over. Don't go too far without adjusting your stretch, because remember you gotta stretch the, the other half now. And I just leave it flat there like this and then fold it as I get there. This way I can see that this little cut edge is still in all the way in there and I'm gonna catch it all. Don't stretch your strap. Cut your threads. It's not like a regular machine where you can back stitch, so it's okay to trim these threads. All right. So these can be very fast to sew because of the fold over elastic. I have an example at the end of the video on how to attach the straps and the front using fabric. And while that is probably more comfortable and softer, it definitely takes longer, but it's, it still goes pretty good. All right, there we go. There's our other one. There we go. All right, now we need to hem it. And so when you're cover stitching a hem, you sew it from the top side, right? So you have to fold it under, and then you have to sew it kind of blind. Now, I used to be really good at this. I used to do it a lot. Um, and I haven't been using my cover stitch for a while now because I just wasn't getting the stitch I really like. So I got a new cover stitch. And now I'm kind of getting my sewing legs back under me on how to sew a cover stitch hem. So to help myself out to kind of get back in gear, I'm gonna iron this up. I'm gonna iron it at my hem allowance. That way it's already folded. All right, so we've ironed the hem, and the other thing you want to make sure of is that all of these transitions and junctures are a nice, smooth one. This is going to be on the inside of the garment, and there's, you know, it's going to be like that forever unless you kind of get rid of some of it before you sew it down. It's a little harder to 
So here's another one. All right, so there's lots of tips and tricks with sewing a cover stitch hem, and I'm kind of old school in that um, I just feel like ironing is about the only little gift I give myself. <laughs> so I can see the edge of my raw edge on the inside there, and so I'm going to try and keep my needle to the left of that. And what I'm finding is that this little crack in my presser foot here, that if I keep that lined up with that raw edge, then uh, it's pretty spot on for me. I'm just still getting the hang of this new machine. So the other thing I've learned is I really like to start before the seam juncture here. I'm a little farther away than I usually am. I usually start about right here. That way I'm not starting directly on this thickness. And I always put my back tacks on the side seams just so that it's not you know front and center or you know at the center back. All right, so let's put that there. And, you know, if this is a one-inch hem, then you can line it up with the one-inch mark on your machine as well. All right. And so to get over the thickness, sometimes I will lift my presser foot up and kind of let it relax and kind of snap back under there so that it's not getting stretched away from the seam. Like sometimes what will happen is the fabric goes like this. It kind of stretches out. You don't really want that to happen. And it's just because it's pushing up against that seam, side seam. So I just lift up my presser foot as I go. Okay, here comes my other side seam. So we're approaching the beginning, so let's clip our threads. We're going to do our absolute best to sew into these exact same two stitch lines so it's nice and lined up. Just overlap a little bit. This is especially helpful to overlap a little bit just in case you don't pull out your work very well and then you end up pulling out a few stitches. At least you could have a, an inch to catch yourself. I just got caught on something there. Let's see if I can ease it out of there. There we go. All right, and now trim your threads. Do what you need to do with your machine in order to secure your threads. All machines are kind of a little different. All right, so let's see how we did here. So yeah, that stayed pretty good on there in closing that raw edge. And, you know, there's a little bit of fabric hanging off there. That's enough. That's, I mean, that's fine. I'm not thrilled with the way my cover stitch looks like underneath quite yet. I'm going to trim this one away a little bit. Be careful not to trim the threads of your side seam either. All right, so let's see. Pretty good. All right, and then I'm going to show you another way to kind of do a... I don't want to call it a cheating <laughs> cover stitch hem, but one in which uh, you don't have to sew it blind like this, and then this stitch shows on the right side um, next. All right, so I'm going to take advantage of the fact that my thread isn't matching that well. It's okay, but I'm going to take advantage of it to show you a technique of um, a reverse cover stitch. So we're going to make it look like flat locking on the right side. And so the first step you're going to do is just overlock this bottom edge. I only have four cones of thread, so that's why I'm going to do the hem out of order to the elastic. And if you want to pick one of your bodices to be the back and one to be the front, and then press your seam allowances towards the back, go for it. I highly recommend doing that just because it's good practice. Just 
go all the way around. Don't stretch it, don't trim anything. You might trim a little, it's okay. You can even it up. And by doing a hem like this, it kind of gets you out of trying to cover stitch the hem blind. Since that's the way a cover stitch machine works. All right, so when I get to the tail, cut it off, go a little bit. All right, and see now we're going to be able to sew this from this side and we'll have kind of a similar stitch on this right side of the garment. And then this way you don't have to worry you're not catching this fold underneath from the right side when you typically do a cover stitch. And I'll do that way on the white one, um, but this way we're gonna do the cheater method. All right, so Typically when you're going to do a cover stitch hem, you don't overlock this edge first. You're just turning it to the back and then trying to keep your needles perfectly on this edge not, and not going past. And um, ideally you're going to catch this edge so you're going to have a needle just to the right of it and then one just on top of it. That way you're capturing the whole edge into the hem. But some machines don't stitch very well like that as well because you have one needle that's not on both thicknesses and one that's um, on both thicknesses. Or maybe you get a little wiggly and that just happens. I used to be really good at it and lately I'm pretty bad at it. So this little trick is kind of a nice way to get out of doing that. Plus it looks cool so you don't really feel too bad that you're cheating because you're not cheating at all. This is exactly what we intentioned, right? All right, so you're going to turn it up at that one inch hem. I like to start just behind a seam so that my machine's not struggling right off the bat. And we're just going to keep it folded up and start going. I was struggling a little bit there at the beginning because you can see there's a little bit of flare happening here after I surged it. So I'm trying to combat that a little bit. I'm going to put this little tail in the hem here as long as it's not too long. You don't want to get any torquing. I may have a little bit at the beginning. I'm still getting used to these machines. They're new to me. but I really love them. They just sew a little different than my old cover stitch. All right, so we're at the beginning, so try and get lined up with where your two needles were so that it looks pretty good. And then my machine, I go forward one stitch, backward one stitch, and then I pull it out. All right, and depending on your machine, you may need to secure these tails a particular way. I'll show you how it looks on this side. So now you have this little kind of a flat lock looking stitch on the right side of your garment. Mine could look a little better. I'm still getting the hang of that. I'd probably go for a wider one. All right, that looks pretty good. I wanted a nice, you know, a close fitting camisole and this will be really great to wear under things and um, especially under my garden coveralls and also under some of my hand knit sweaters in the winter time. There we go. Well, I hope yours went well too and uh, maybe we'll sew a few other variations on this because there's so many different ways to sew a camisole like this. Stay tuned for another way to finish the armholes and the neck using fabric. 
All right, so I kind of threw together one more version so that we could look at attaching the neckband pieces and the underarm pieces using fabric and not fold over elastic. All right, so here's the two front and back pieces, these two short pieces. One of these I've ironed in half, because I'm gonna show you two different ways to attach it using the serger and cover stitch. And then for the armhole pieces, you're gonna sew these into a circle just like we did with the fold over elastic. So just sew uh, your underarm seam here, 3 eighths of an inch and press open. So it's nice and um, flat and not too bulky. All right. So we'll start with our front neck pieces. So for this first one, I ironed it wrong sides together. So it's just folded in half that way. And we're gonna sew this right sides together between the points. So make sure you line up these edges here. All right, so slip that under there. And it's still a 3 8 inch seam. I'm going to get it going and then I'm going to stretch. All right, so now we're under the needle. And so just like with the fold over elastic, you want to line up your edges and stretch before you're sewing. So don't stretch this after you start sewing. Now, fabric's going to be a little easier to stretch depending on what fabric you use. And you can tell I cut this along the length grain rather than the cross grain. That's mainly because I didn't have enough fabric to cut it with the cross grain, but the stretch in the length and the cross grain on this fabric is about equal. It's very, very stretchy. In fact, you, you might even see me struggle to sew this because it's, it's pretty stretchy fabric. It's like a bamboo uh, tensile mix. All right, so don't stretch this one, only stretch this one. I'm just gonna sew it on with 3 8 inch seam. So you'll see I'm trimming a little bit. And if you need to adjust, just make sure you keep these edges nice and lined up at the end. I wasn't very good about my seam allowance right about here, so it might show on this side of my band, might like look a little wider right there. All right, so here's this one. And now I'm going to cover stitch this below the seam and it's going to flatten down the seam allowance towards the body of the garment. I'm using a dark gray thread. Hopefully you can see it. Just get that in there. You shouldn't really have to stretch. Just try and keep everything nice and flat. Keep your seam allowances pressed towards the body. All right, and so now you can see, same thing like on a t-shirt maybe. All right, and so let me show you the other way to attach the front neck. I feel like this one is a little trickier. So this one you're gonna put right sides together flat, all right? Same thing, line up your edges and we're gonna serge it on. Starting off very similar. Might have to stretch a little Line up all your edges at the corner there, this point and the corner of your band. Stretch the band, not the camisole, and only stretch when you're not sewing, and then hold it that way while you're sewing. If you didn't watch the fold over elastic section of the video, you're just watching this section. And what I mean by that is never start sewing, then stretch when the machine's in motion. You only want to stretch and hold it stretched while it's sewing. This protects your needles from bending while you're sewing and protects your machine. All right, and now we're gonna turn to the inside and cover stitch. 
And this is the fiddly step. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to arrange our band here and we want this edge to be directly across from the edge sewn to the neckline here. And mine's gonna be pretty easy to illustrate because I have these stripes that are going across it and so I can just match up the stripes just like that and that'll kind of help keep me on track and prevent any torquing. Now what you can do also is maybe mark with some chalk the center point here and the center point of your band. Um, you can even divide it up into eighths or quarters or something like that that kind of helps you. Um, I've tried binder clips but honestly I feel like it's a little too fussy and you might spend way too much time fussing with those. All right, so one thing I think you can do for this next step to make it a little less fiddly is to tack this first little edge with your sewing machine. So fold it with your seam allowance into the band, line up your raw edge just before the seam there that you sewed it, and maybe take a, just a few stitches across in the seam allowance right here and then that way you don't have to fuss and make sure that you didn't catch the, make sure that you catch the beginning there. All right, so I'm gonna get mine in there. I'm gonna use my awl to kind of arrange it. I'm just gonna get it going and then I'm gonna arrange it some more. Now remember, if the beginning is a little rocky, that's okay because we're going to use the armhole band to cover up that seam. All right, and so now I lift it up and I look under, just like this. Ideally, your stitch on below that's going to be on here, on the side here, is going to encase this raw edge. Now the first time, few times you do this, that, that may not be the case. It won't be for me either. I haven't done this in years. <laughs> you also don't really want to be stretching any of this. It shouldn't, you shouldn't need to. You may need to like line up the ends and that's about it because it, it was pulled a little bit. Let's see how I did. So there's our binding. And so you can see the stitching is on the binding side and then it's enclosed in the band. And so let's, let's compare these two. So this one, the cover stitch is on the body of the camisole. This one, the stitching is on the band. Very different looks. On the inside, they look almost identical. All right, so let's put on our armholes. All right, so we have our armholes sewn into a circle, so it's nice and flat right here. And we're going to sew this right sides together. And now I also make, you gotta make sure that you've marked the star marking on this band. And so I did a little tiny notch so that I would know rather than using the marker this time. So we're gonna start our armhole at the point. So take that star marking, match it up to the point there, which is basically the band. Just like this. And now you're gonna have to gently stretch your band between point to point lining up the underarm seam to the side seam. Right sides together and make sure that the circle's on top of the garment. And just lift up your presser foot like this, slide it under there. My fabric is so um, whooshy. It really wants to do whatever it likes. All right, so I'm gonna get it going and then I'm gonna arrange it some more. Once I have it going, I feel more confident. All right, so I'm gonna press the seam allowance one direction. Now we'll consider this one, this side the back. So I'm pressing the seam allowance towards the back. So that means I'm actually not gonna open up the seam. I'm gonna press it towards the front. 
That way these little seams can kind of nestle together. It e makes it easier to line up the underarm seam and it offsets the thickness. All right, so three eighths inch seam and you're gonna trim a little off probably. Shouldn't be too hard to stretch if you're using fabric. Make sure you don't get any of your camisole underneath. And then, you know, get, you're getting to your other side. So look for your other star mark. Align it to the top of your band. This essentially makes it stretch a little bit more compared to the fold over elastic because the fold over elastic straddles the edge of the garment. So when you're doing fold over elastic, it is on this body edge and meaning it doesn't add any length to this underarm seam. All right, so now we have this one, this armhole on, and let's sew our other one on. Same thing. It's okay if you sew on the band a little bit before we get there. All right, so now we have our other armhole on there. All right, so this step is pretty fussy. And there's a couple ways to do it. I'm going to show you what I think will probably be a pretty clean way to do it. So we're going to take this armhole now and we're going to fold it in. Let's get rid of some of these threads. And we're going to use some binder clips. So this is definitely not a, a factory way to do this. You would probably have a machine that did this all for you. So I'm going to turn under just like I'm binding the edge here. I want a nice clean finish. Um, mainly I want a nice clean finish on the strap. And most of the other ways to sew this, you're not going to get a clean finish. You're gonna get at least one raw edge along your stitching or, um, yeah, it's, it's gonna be roughly like that. All right, so I'm just turning under the edge just like as if I was binding it. I don't think it's going to be too hard to sew. It's just we need to be a little fussy with the prep. So I'm just going to put a bunch of binder clips in here. And see, look at that. It's nice and clean. The great thing with using fabric for your uh, binding and your armholes and your neck is that it's so much softer. So if you're sewing this for someone who has um, issues with uh, tactile issues, you know, like doesn't like tags or scratchy elastic or something like that. The fabric is a really great way to go. You just got to be careful with the thread choice and make sure that the thread is nice and soft. Um, you might even find some, you know, woolly nylon or a uh, puff thread to use. Experiment with something that's soft. Using a lighter weight thread will help that as well. All right, so let's get this. This right here, since I surged a little bit onto there, it, you know, it's kind of stretching it a little bit. It's okay. I like to give it a little tug occasionally, make sure everything's still lined up. All right, and so with this strap, you're gonna kind of continue this little binding look. You don't want to get any twisting or torquing. Again, my stripes are really helping me keep on track, which is kind of nice. They'll also show really obviously if I'm not on track, like my side seams, <laughs> but I didn't match very good. All right, let's get rid of this thread here. You might find uh, ironing it might help. Some knits don't respond very well to ironing, like they just don't even know you're ironing them. Um, this one responds very well to it. 
So I could iron it, maybe at least the folds. And that would probably help me get it. Try and maintain the width of your strap. All right, so we're ready to sew this one. Look at all those clips. I don't even know if I have enough clips to do the other one. So now obviously if you're using a zigzag or um, your straight stitch machine, if you've sewn with me before, you know I use my single needle machine, this one right here, to sew a lot of knits without using a stretch stitch, without using a zigzag. I do it a lot um, and I'm completely fine with it. I know a lot of people aren't. You don't have to do it that way at all and that's why I'm giving... <clears throat> And that's why I'm giving some serger and cover stitch options because I know that those are favored by a lot of folks. Come here. All right, how was that fast forward? Must have been nice. <laughs> Too nice and fast. All right, so let's do our best and get these sewn. All right, let's get everything situated here. I'm gonna do this from the right side of the garment. And I think I'll start right here. Nice little flat spot. Put it in my cover stitch. Before I start stitching, I'm going to kind of look underneath and see. It looks pretty good. I'll start taking out some of these clips and making sure. Now remember, the band is a straight piece, so if you keep that nice and straight, it, it helps a lot. We're just straightening out that armhole. All right, these points are going to make sure that you're including all of them. They will want to kind of squeak out, but what I like to do is kind of push that point in there to keep it nice and straight so it's not pulling. This is remarkably easy to sew compared to how it was to pin. <laughs> the clipping or pinning was harder. Now we're on the strap part. The strap's trying to ooch away. As long as we catch the raw edge inside, at least we know it won't be popping out. All right, we're almost to the end. Again, we're gonna keep this. Let's clip our threads here so it's clean when we get go on top of it. Just like that. Keep this nice and straight. I'm kind of pushing this little um, front band in there, making sure it's covered up in there. All right. Okay, how's that look? Let's see. So that's what it looks like on the outside. I have a, you know, a little bit of a bump there. That's how it looks on the inside nice and clean. And this is the strap. So nice and soft. My stripes are a little off there, aren't they? This seems like it'd be really nice and comfortable. And um, let you in on a secret, that's the first time I've ever done that in my life. <laughs> All right, so same thing over here. Let's start in a nice little straight section. Maybe we'll start closer down in the armhole. I don't know why I keep starting so high up. It just seems a little bit more accessible. Okay. 
my team would have been on average, and I think my strap is a little wider than the binding on the armhole. All right, let's trim our threads. bad. That was, wasn't too hard. I think that's something I'd like to practice some more. I like the way that looks. It's nice and soft. This isn't how the instructions tell you how to do it. Uh, since they're using a home machine, um, so this is just another option. All right, so there we go. There's another strap there. Nice and soft. Far slinkier than the elastic. Very different look on the neck bands too. Then they fold over elastic. All right.